We're going from one amazing support job to another amazing support job. But now with extra pizzazz added on. Welcome to the stage, Bravely Default's Performer. The Performer is a job that fully focuses on playing support, granting the entire party various buffs, ranging from attack and defense increases, extra BP, to even a little bit of aggro management. This alone gives the Performer a good name, but before we talk about all the crazy stuff you can do with this job, we should first dive into what exactly this job can do. So, let's first take a look at the Performer's specialty, Save, Singing, MP. Try saying that five times fast. Singing is the Performer's main means of supporting your party, meaning you are going to be using these actions quite often during combat. And because songs aren't exactly the cheapest thing in the world, having this built-in discount is quite handy. Weird side note, but I always like to think that Save Singing MP is just a funnier way of saying that the performer has a boatload of cough drops stuffed in their pockets. It's just a funny little thing. Anyway, so, starting off with the performer's combat abilities. I have separated all of their singing skills into one of three categories based on what effects they bestow. So, up first are the stat-boosting songs. These abilities will raise a certain stat of all party members, covering both physical and magical effects. Speed can also be increased thanks to Love Rush. Each of these songs will increase its specified stat by 25%, maxing out at a total of 50%. Being able to boost your entire party at the same time is quite useful, and these abilities also bypass Reflect spells, giving them an edge against other spells with the same effects, such as Protect, Haste, or Shell. The MP cost can be a bit of an issue if you plan on singing with other jobs, but thanks to their specialty, the performer won't have that issue too much. The second singing category is for BP songs. This contains One More For You and My Hero. One More For You costs MP and will raise the target's BP by 1, granting the performer a reliable method for being a BP battery in the early to mid game, which is surprisingly useful. Since the MP cost of One More For You is really low, spamming this song is not that difficult. My Hero, on the other hand, requires BP to use, making it a bit more of a puzzle if you intend to use it constantly. The benefits of My Hero, though, are that it increases the entire party's BP by one, including the caster of the spell. Pair My Hero with the Merchant's Low Leverage, which will have its cost, or Mimic from the Freelancer, which means it won't have any cost after its first action, and you have one of the most reliable BP batteries in the entire game. One last thing to note about these songs, though, is that their effects are reversed for undead enemies, meaning that if you cast these abilities on an undead enemy, they will lose 1 BP instead of gaining it. Use this little loophole to lock out undead enemies and bosses out of BP for whole battles, giving you basically a free win. The third and final singing category are for the remaining songs that have unique effects. Starting with Catch Me, this song raises the singer's chance of being targeted by enemies for 5 turns. Putting this on a tanky character, like a knight, can allow them to take single target hits for the team fairly often. Note that the biggest downside of Catch Me is that it isn't a guarantee aggro tool. Even if it raises the chances of the user being targeted to its maximum, there is still a small chance that a hit will go through to an unintended party member. Ask yourself if the benefits outweigh the drawbacks before using this, but do note that it is pretty consistent all around, and you won't see it fail all that often. Second is Zero Sum. While this is technically a BP-related song, it acts very differently from the others. When Zero Sum is used, it will reduce BP to zero for all combatants with one BP or more. This can mostly be used to keep enemies from stocking up too much BP, forcing them to either build it back up again before striking, giving you time to fight back or build up your own team, or the enemies have to resort to a weaker attack that is much easier to survive and counter. It is an interesting little ability that has a niche use, but might come in handy once or twice in a regular playthrough, especially against a very defensive focused boss. Now we move on to support abilities, starting off with Support Amp. Equip this on a party member, and any stat raising effects that they receive will be boosted by 10%, while lowering stat weakening effects by 10%. An extra 
10% on a defense or speed boost can make a huge difference in tough battles, so keep this supportability in mind when outfitting your party's kit. Do note that this amp only applies for the character with this ability equipped, so that means that all characters must have it equipped on their person if you wish for them all to benefit from this boost. Second is Buff Up. At the beginning of every turn in combat outside of the first one, the character with Buff Up will gain a 5% increase to their physical attack and defense and their magical attack and defense, reaching a maximum of 50% increase after 10 turns have passed. This steady increase of stat buffs is quite handy in long-winded encounters if you don't want to have a dedicated support unit on your team. The consistent increase also aids jobs that are naturally weak or fragile, as they will be able to get stronger as combat progresses naturally. Up next is Prolonged Support. Prolonged Support extends the duration of stat buffs by double. Most buffs usually last somewhere around 4-5 to five turns, but with this ability, that duration is raised to a crazy 8-10 to 10 turns. This allows support characters the chance to build up extra BP or provide aid elsewhere, as they won't need to constantly re-up certain stat buffs every few turns. Similar to Support Amp, however, every party member must equip this ability for it to take effect for the entire team, as it only affects the individual, not the entire party. Next is Charm Immunity, and this one is pretty self-explanatory, we've seen immunity of support abilities quite often nowadays. However, Charm is quite an annoying ailment, as it basically turns one of your allies into an enemy. So, having the ability to remove the stress of your healer potentially restoring their newfound crushes HP 30 minutes into an encounter is obviously helpful. Finally is the performer's own specialty, Safe Singing MP. If you aren't planning on using any gear that lessens MP costs, slapping this on the character who you want to sing their heart out isn't a bad idea, as again, singing abilities don't come cheap. The two slots it takes up will absolutely be worth it in the long run if you intend on spamming singing abilities. Now, with all of the performer's abilities shown off and talked about, let's discuss its viability as a main job. If the length of this video wasn't proof enough, the performer is a very straightforward job without too much complexity. It provides steady stat-raising buffs to the entire party and can be outfitted as a BP battery if paired with a merchant or freelancer. The simplicity of this job allows it to mesh well with pretty much any team, and thanks to their specialty safe singing MP, the performer won't be found wanting for MP and can play the sole support role in a party. The performer's base stats are very middle of the road as well, meaning that you can slot healing or attack magic on them, and while it won't be able to match the strength of a black or white mage, the extra help will always be a bonus. Really the only standout problem for the performer comes from its support abilities. To get the most out of some of the more useful ones like Prolonged Support or Buff Up, you need to have all allies equip them, as those abilities only affect the user. This really isn't that big of a deal though, but it does mean that there is a lack of synergy between the performer's combat and support abilities, since their entire identity is based around granting party-wide support. The performer is best known for being a sub-job though, thanks to its songs not needing a mind or intelligence stat to excel. You can realistically plop this job on any other main job and be perfectly fine, as once again I will reiterate, the support that this job gives is party-wide, it's really good. The biggest thing to watch out for when using the performer as a sub-job though is your MP consumption. Not having a built-in safe singing MP specialty makes spamming songs quite difficult. Either dedicate two slots to it as a support ability, or equip a piece of gear like the gold hairpin that cuts the cost of all MP by 25%. Either way, keep an eye on your MP, or you will very quickly run yourself out of it. Also, I don't know whether this should be a pro or a con, but I do want to make a note that the girls look like they are dabbing when using certain songs. Use this information how you will, but I personally find it quite funny and charming, and you can never unsee it now. And now, we've come to a very exciting fashion tier list segment for me. I've been waiting for this one for a while. Now, first off, let's talk about the boys. Man, is this a good look for both of them. The white suit is quite stylish and very reminiscent of a certain popular singer. The arm flaps add to the flair of the outfit quite well, and the sunglasses. The sunglasses! Easily one of my favorite outfits in the entire Bravely franchise. S-tier spot for both of the guys. 
which also marks Tiz's first S as well. Congratulations to you, Tiz. The ladies are no slouches either, sporting a very in-your-face outfit with big bunny ears and a bright dress. Usually I'm against showy outfits like this, but man do the girls rock this look. I do prefer Idea's design over Agnes's, mostly due to red and white being a more interesting color combo in my opinion, but Agnes's blue isn't bad by any means. They truly look like they could sing and dance their hearts out with this design, and that's all I wish for. I will dock points for not having the sunglasses, however, landing the girls in a solid A-tier spot. <laughs>